Alright dude, I'm going to set up your pie. Okay, first of all, this one right over here is my Raspberry Pi with the silver foil braided uh, HDMI cable. Uh, and it's not powered on right now. Take your SD card, which you got a good one, uh, 8 gig class 6. I'm going to rate it for 30 megabyte. Uh, loaded up the files for um, Berry Boot, and you just plug, you just put the uh, SD card in the um, slot. Uh, let me make sure that yours is plugging. Yeah, yours is still tight. This is the first time you're so released. All right, plug up the power. And okay, we power it on, and it yeah, it's gonna turn on my TV. Let me get my keyboard. Be nice if I uh, made sure it's on. Uh, yeah. Right input. There we go. Uh, enable overscan. I'm going to. Uh, okay, disable. We're on. Right here. Okay, did you see green border on the top of the screen? Uh, you know, I didn't see it, but it don't matter. Um, oh, I guess I need a mouse for this. Oh. Wait. No, I don't. I'm not thinking. Alright, uh, right here, everything's good. You know, we're not going to have overscan. And we're on wired Ethernet connection. We are in, what city? Put uh, America, Kentucky, Louisville. Keyboard layout, U.S. And uh, it's that. Um, the storage device. I'm going to do the MMCBLK0. That, that's your SD card. Because we're not going to do the Voyager GT. That is, uh, that's my USB 3.0 flash drive. Then, the, uh, then there's the USB 2.0 flash drive. Apparently you can install Berry Boot to a flash drive with this. But you can't boot to it though. Because the, uh, the, um, now it's copying boot files to storage because you can only boot from the SD card on this thing. And this is with uh, Berry Boot, the latest version from um, from uh, dated from oh gosh, what is it? Uh, September fourth, two thousand twelve. Well, of course, today is September seventh, two thousand twelve. So this is only four days old. This version of it. Um, I had prepared the, the, the files on the computer already. They were on the SD card. Now here's your selection. You can go with, it says Debian. That's uh, Wheezy, or, or it's actually Raspbian, which is the official Raspberry Pi operating system uh, distribution. We're going to go for Open Elec because it's basically a single purpose Linux distribution for the purpose of only running XBMC. That's what we're going to install on your SD card. There's Poppy Linux. That's kind of more general purpose. Uh, it's lightweight and all that. And you see it's only 123 meg. <laughs> and here's uh, uh, Rasp Razor. Um, unofficial Raspbian flavor. Offers some kind of the graphical user interface. This is the uh, one laptop per child uh, operating system. Uh, then here's a uh, thin client. Uh, Berry Terminal. Which is only 22 meg for the operating system, so you know it's lightweight. Oh, how about this? Uh, Berry Web Server 5 meg. It's pretty lightweight. <clears throat> Several of these you can fit all within memory. We're going to go for Open Elec. And uh, it's grabbing it from the internet. Oh, around 6 megabit per second. It's only got, was it, like 71.9 megabyte to, um, to download? And um, it's not going to take very long. I mean, I got 
20 megabit cable internet, but it's not even using my full connection speed. Probably download it from some kind of online repository or whatever. But still, even with only, uh, you know, using a third of my internet speed, it still don't, I mean, it still takes like less than five minutes. You know, I mean, I didn't time it exactly, but it doesn't take very long at all. Um, but this gives you, the, this Berry Boot gives you the opportunity, or the, yeah, the, well, the option to install um, from a Wi Fi source. So I'm assuming it's got some kind of Wi-Fi drivers to it, maybe uh, some, um, but you're primarily going to be doing it through Ethernet anyway. And I already installed this to my Pi, and I'm going to put this video on YouTube. I, mean, I could put this video on a flash drive for you, or I could even, if you got enough time, you know, to wait, I could just transcode it real quick and put it on your SD card so you can watch the tutorial <laughs> on there. Now it's not zoomed in, you won't be able to read everything that's on the screen but I'm, I'm telling you the options. Now this on this is the Berry Boot menu editor apparently you can boot or boot from multiple operating systems like basically if we wanted to we can install multiple Linux operating systems on your SD card if there was enough space uh, so we could have open elect, we could have Raspbian so if you decide you want to get you one in 32 gigs you know, and that's all you wanted, you know, is just one SD card. You can choose between which one you boot up from. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather have them separate, so that way, you know, nothing's, you know, interfering. Um, and did this, uh, uh, maybe I am going to need a mouse for this. This one's not responding all that well. kind of don't like, well... This is a USB mouse, so let's see how well this does. It's going to suck for the purposes of this video if this don't work out all this well. Should have probably used a mouse to begin with. Ah, we're good. Alright. I was using a keyboard. What we do, we select Open Elect to make it the default boot. Now we can add another OS if we would have installed. Wonder what that'd be like. Yep, here we go. Here's the option: install operating system. We could put Debian, uh, you know, Wheezy, which is Raspbian. We can put that on there. We can put all kind of other stuff on there. You can install multiples, but we're not going to do that. You just select Open Elect, and this is a great uh, uh, bootloader and installer. And all that. we're going to make it default, so it's going to boot up. We well, would boot that one up anyway because there's only one, but. Um, this is a great manager of this. I mean, whoever wrote this did really good. And uh, so is that one just a web browser? Uh, well, you know, web server. Server. Yeah, you can serve up files with it. You, you can turn your Raspberry Pi into a three and a half watt web server that makes no sound, has no moving parts, and won't run up your electric bill. And so, if you wanted just a basic file server. So you can get on the internet and from somewhere else and grab files off of the central location or serve up a basic website. I mean, think about it. This thing has a 700 megahertz processor, 32-bit at 700 megahertz, with 256 megabytes of RAM. Fifteen years ago, that was a web server. You know what I'm saying? Fifteen years ago in 1997. Now we're going to exit this because we already made our operating system default. Um, and we're going to restart. I love that that boot screen with the colors and all that. Um, so yeah, I mean, you won't be able to serve up thousands of users, but you could serve up a dozen. You know, like like my friend Tom wanted to do. You know, he just, you know, like Tom, he wanted to have him a basic web server for like grabbing files from if he were somewhere and host drivers on it for when he needs to do system repair at some place or whatever. And yeah, I mean, it just there's all kinds of stuff. You could turn you could turn your Raspberry Pi into a uh, into a server for uh, let's say um, you made okay. Let's say like my plan. I want to build an arcade machine and my software and have all this other kind of stuff. I can make my own online repository. Use a Raspberry Pi as a web server. Now I need to make sure that my internet connection and my service provider will let me do so because if they find out and you don't got that in your in your service 
package or whatever that you can get in trouble. But let's say I did have it, you know, that that uh, authorization or capability, then I can do that, you know, and and then uh, so then my uh, my arcade machines can grab updates from a Raspberry Pi that I can leave on all the time that I can afford to leave on all the time because it's only three and a half watts. You know, I mean, it's just, it's great. I mean, the Raspberry Pi is pretty nice. Okay, I'm going to get your weather going, set up. Like, you, you still live toward your middle town, right? Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I could put that in here. Because I got cordon, you know, for like mine. Uh, I think, yeah, this is going to get it from Louisville anyway because that's the city I put in for like, you know, like your country area and your time zone. It's grabbing it from New Albany. Now, I need to find out. This is automatic. I didn't do like any settings. Um, Universal Album Scrape, real quick. Alright. Um, we're going to do your settings. Oh yeah, we gotta get the mouse. Oh. Um, it, it, if you want, you can leave it on New Albany. Um, location setup. Come on. Alright, here we go. Nearest largest town. Cause see Wonderground, they got um they got weather stations all over the place. It's not like the weather channel where like they should have one at school. They might. It, it's not like the weather channel where they um, might have data from um, Louisville. Why is this going so slow? You know, I'm just going to cancel out of that. I don't really need it. You know, always close enough. I need this video to not last very long. So I'm going to upload it to BeagleBotics. System info. All this will set up. I don't believe. Yep, that's done.